So we had written these equations point-wise up here, but what we're going to do is we're going to um, solve the finite value method by basically doing conservation of energy over a control volume. So to do that, um, really all you need to do is integrate over a particular volume. So let me call this like a control volume. So I'm going to integrate the differential equation over, let's say, you know, if I have some geometry, and I don't know, maybe I've got a bunch of cells that I've broken it into. What I'll do is like just highlight, let's say, this element here, and I'll write the control, you know, the governing equation for that control volume by just integrating the equations over the size of that control volume. So you'll see that this actually replicates the um, equation. So let's see, so we got, let me just write this out. Uh, like I said, this is a dv and a dv and del dot gamma gradient integrated over volume plus we integrate the source term over the volume. So um, the basic idea of the finite volume method is to take that integral equation and um, approximate it as you know using a discrete approximation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through so let me label so each of these four terms here let me let me label them one two three and four one two three and four and each one of these when I go to approximate them discreetly involves its own like little intricacies but it really doesn't take um, too long to do it. So like for example um, I'll do the first term right now before I cut off this video. So like for example if I want to approximate the first term so what is that? So if this is a fixed control volume um, so like imagine that I you know make this mesh the, the control volume doesn't generally move from time step to time step. That's not usually how people do things. Oops. So um, that means that this um, derivative can be taken outside this integral. And, um, you know, this is a pretty small um, control volume, right? So typically we break this thing out down to be pretty small. And so really when I'm trying to integrate this over the control volume, if I have a small enough control volume, then there won't be too much variation. So if I'm thinking about like how much rho and V vary over the size of this thing, there'll be some variation of them potentially. Um, but you know, it might, let's say at most look like a linear variation over a small enough element. And if I had a linear variation, so imagine that I'm trying to do an integral from, let's say, here to here, and let's say rho and v are changing, or sorry, rho and phi are changing somewhat over the span of, you know, where I'm trying to do the integral. Well, I could get that, if it was really exactly linear, I could get the value of that integral exactly by just taking the, the midpoint and multiplying by the width. So that would give me this. That, so what I'll do is I'll just like take this thing and I will approximate it by um, by just taking, so this is approximately equal to um, what happens if I just evaluate, let's say rho and um, phi at, let's say the midpoint or the center, it's actually the centroid, the, the centroid and then since this is a time variation, what I'll do is use a finite difference approximation. And I'll say that like whatever the, this thing is at time equals i plus one, so it's, let's say it's gonna change with time. I'll just evaluate at the centroid um, at two different times and then divide by, you know, how much the discrete difference in time in my time steps. So, um, bam, so that's our first, so we've got our first approximation here. So this thing, K 
can be approximated using, let's say, the finite difference method. And so, by the way, what this means is this is like the average value, um, which we'll interpret as approximately equal to the value at the centroid of our cells. So that's why these, these little points that sit in the middle have some important um, meaning in the finite volume method. We choose these the, the points where we are actually representing. So what we're going to try and do is solve for the values of the, let's say, the unknowns or the scalar phi's at the centroids. And then any approximations we need to do will we'll base on the discrete values at the centroids.